Welcome back to the Everyday Workbench. Today we are talking about frozen pipes in your home. With us today, we have John Bathke from Bathke and Sons Plumbing. And John, uh, how often do you come across frozen pipes in people's homes? Well, it depends on the winter, of course, Sean, but already this winter, we've had many, many frozen pipes. You know, it's another polar vortex. So, you know, daily, a dozen a day, we get calls. And a lot of those frozen pipes are results of a contractor or a developer or somebody who's maybe flipping a house doesn't put the right insulation in or perhaps cheapens out on that step. And a lot of times a homeowner may not even realize there's an issue and you may have uh, mild winter after mild winter. And then all of a sudden when it hits, it comes at you like a speeding train, doesn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. You're, you're a hundred percent spot on. So probably the vast majority of times we're finding pipes frozen. It's insulation not done properly. Uh, occasionally it was poorly installed plumbing or occasionally it's even just somebody forgetting to disconnect a hose and something like that can, can be quite disastrous as well. Yeah, the insulation is pretty frustrating because most of the times it's about $5 worth of insulation and about an extra 10 minutes that could possibly prevent an issue like a frozen pipe. Now, as far as an outdoor spigot, I'll be honest, uh, I have not shut off my spigots and insulated my spigots as early as I should have. So I've had some close calls with that. So I can certainly relate to your clients that have had that happen to them. Absolutely. Hey, listen, I'm a plumbing contractor and it happened to me once. I didn't disconnect the hose. I had a freeze up. I was able to repair it easy enough, but I totally empathize with, with the people that it, you know, it's not, you're not using the hoses anymore in November. Uh, so you don't think to disconnect them. That's why, you know, we try to send out reminders. Hey, listen, go ahead and get them disconnected. You're not using them anymore. Wind them up, put them in the garage, wait till next year. Yeah, it, it's, you know, out of sight, out of mind sometimes. So you wake up on a cold winter morning and you go to uh, turn on your kitchen faucet and there's a little drip. At least if there's a little drip, that's probably good news, correct? Absolutely. If it's running at all, don't even turn it off. Let it, let it run. Okay. Now, speaking of letting it run, uh, we hear all the time on the news during these uh, cold weather spells that we have to keep your kitchen faucets running. Uh, when somebody does that as a homeowner, is it just a trickle or is it a stream or, or what do you recommend as a plumber? Just a trickle. But what you got to make sure of is that that trickle is if it's a single handle faucet, it's right in the middle so that you've got both the hot and the cold running. Because if you have it over to the left or over to the right, you're gonna have one or the other turned on and then, then either the hot or the cold, cold could still freeze. So just a trickle, but again, you have to make sure that it's the hot and the cold that's running. And as far as a homeowner, what is the biggest mistake you can make if you go to turn on your faucet and you've got nothing coming out? So now you've determined that you have a frozen pipe what is the thing that you would recommend a homeowner doesn't do to cause more damage? Before you do anything to attempt to thaw it, whether it's even leave, uh, just leaving the cabinet doors open or taking a hair dryer or something, make sure you first find out where your water main shutoff is. Because what can happen when a pipe freezes is it can split. Now, when it's full of ice, you don't know that it's split because it's ice, it's not, gonna, it's not gonna leak. But once it thaws, that split is gonna become evident. You're gonna have water spraying everywhere. So find out where that main water shutoff is before you attempt anything. Other than that, I would say the common sense stuff. Don't use a torch to try and thaw the pipe out. That can be dangerous. Even a heat gun like they use to, to get paint off the surfaces can be very dangerous. You could start a fire. And uh, flamethrowers, are they out of the question? No flamethrowers, maybe a hair dryer. I've always used a space heater, uh, roughly a foot, foot and a half, two feet away from the area that I believe is frozen. And that seemed to work in the past. Is that a pretty good strategy? That's perfect. Again, knowing where the main water shut off is. So in the event that you have to, you can get it turned off quick. Gotcha. And when is it time to call in a professional to help you out with the frozen pipe? Uh, simply when that doesn't work. If you can't get it yourself by making sure the heat in the house is up enough, 
opening up all the cabinet doors and maybe putting some space heaters relatively close to the area that's that's frozen. Uh, if you can't get it in you know several hours, it might be time to call the professional. Now there also could possibly be an issue in the springtime getting back to the exterior spigots where you may have an issue um, with a silcock that freezes over and then you don't even think about it. And then when you go to turn that water back on in March or April or May, you could have an issue there as well, correct? A lot of frost proof hose faucets, they're not frost proof if you don't disconnect the hose. And those shut off 12 inches inside the house. There's a long stem from the handle in. So if it freezes and bursts, you won't know it till you turn that faucet back on again. Any of this advice that John is giving us is very helpful today. Most of it is very inexpensive and it only takes a few minutes. And most of the preventative items are more or less DIY items for the most part. Absolutely, 100%. You know, just remembering to do it, being cautious and uh, diligent. Great, thank you for your time, John. Uh, John, how do people get a hold of you if they are looking for a professional plumber in the Chicagoland area? Well, we have a phone like most people, 773-276-5430, or just Google Betsky Plumbing. Great. Thank you very much for your time. And as always, thank you for watching the Everyday Workbench.